The Star Wars universe is populated by an ever-expanding number of strange creatures. One that stands out to me is the iconic space slug from The Empire Strikes Back. Space slugs are actually called exogors. These silicon-based creatures are worm-like in shape with rows of massive teeth. They're classified as vacuum predator since they live in open space. They live long lives, very long lives, which allows them to grow to incredibly large proportions, up to 900 meters in length. For a long time, it was believed that slugs large enough to swallow a ship were just tales told by spacers who have spent far too long traversing the vacuum. These creatures make their home in asteroids. To get to an asteroid to claim it as their own, they push off the rock and essentially swim in zero gravity until they find another one. When they arrive on a new rock, they can crawl the surface until they find a suitable location. If they don't find one, rinse and repeat. When the suitable location is found, they burrow into it. They burrow until their entire mass is hidden. It's unclear exactly how their digestive system works, since they would feed on energy emissions, minerals found in the asteroid, floating space debris, and other creatures. To conserve energy, the slugs would just lay in their holes with their mouths open, looking a lot like a cave. They were able to be more proactive in their hunt, but expending the energy with an unstable food source limited these attempts. An Exogor's primary living food source is a smaller bat-like creature called a Minoc. Minox are abundant in the galaxy and can also survive in the vacuum of space. They're considered a nuisance throughout the galaxy. They feed on electricity and will destroy electronics and ships to get at it. Relatively small space slugs are sometimes brought into a system intentionally to cull the Minoc population. Some systems have banned exogorth hunting to keep the Minox under control. Minox are their primary food source, but an exogorth will attack anything they come across. Their massive jaws and teeth can rip a spacer suit or even puncture the hull of a starship. I mentioned hunting these ugly creatures, and there is some benefit to that. Their flesh is used in a number of commercial applications for its toughness. It can even be ground down and used as an abrasive. Their organs have electrical conductivity properties and are crystalline in nature. They're used in numerous electronic devices. Parts of the slug are even rendered to be used in beauty products. These unique creatures did not use a mate to breed. Instead, they reproduced through fission. When an exogorth reached approximately 10 meters long, they would split into two smaller slugs. Each would go on its own way, and the cycle would repeat. If fission didn't happen, the slug would continue to grow, unchecked, and get to incredible sizes over time. Exogorths seem to be biologically immortal. If time can kill them, it takes longer than has ever been measured. For example, Sayo, the massive slug that swallowed the Millennium Falcon in The Empire Strikes Back, was estimated to be over a billion years old, and that was still considered relatively young for an exogorth. The inside of an exogorth could become an ecosystem all its own. Many creatures and plant life would find their way into the exogorth's gut over generations. Space slugs actually had a culture between them even though they lived very solitary lives. Their hierarchy was based on the complexity of the ecosystem growing inside them. To go back to Sayo, they were considered low on the social ladder since it only contained Minox, a parasite. I have no idea how they communicated with each other over the vastness of space to compare ecosystems systems, but that was their culture. I've mentioned Sayo a couple times now. This ancient slug lived in a massive asteroid. Han Solo, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and Leia Organa were fleeing the Empire after the rebel base on Hoth was taken. Han piloted the Falcon into what he believed was a cave to hide from the pursuing Imperial warships. When a Minoc threatened to undo the repairs on the already compromised Falcon, the trio went outside to investigate. Blaster bolts were fired, irritating Sayo. Solo, an experienced spacer, connected the dots quickly and got his ship out of there before the slug could stop their retreat by shutting its massive jaws. After the Falcon got away, Sayo was agitated at losing a meal and the opportunity to grow their ecosystem. It lashed out and attacked pursuing TIE fighters. It damaged one TIE bomber so badly that the pilot had to eject into an asteroid field, an incredibly dangerous maneuver. The rest of the TIEs attacked the slug until it retreated. The only lasting damage they caused was in chipping a single tooth. During the Galactic Civil War, a a rebel spy wing and a U-wing was fleeing from an Imperial-class Star Destroyer called the Bellicose. The U-wing saw a massive space slug and intentionally flew into its open mouth to evade the capital ship. The commanding officer of the Star Destroyer ordered his crew to drive the ship straight into the slug's mouth as well. They hit the creature hard and engaged all their sublight engines, eventually tearing through the back of the creature. It's shame they killed something like this, as it had to be at least a billion or more years old to be big enough to 
almost swallow a Star Destroyer. In some karmic justice, the Minox that inhabited this particular Exogorth all attached to the Star Destroyer, and there were a lot of them. They leached its power and ruined the hull. The crew had to abandon ship in an asteroid field and were left defenseless when Rebel reinforcements showed up to bail out the U-Wing. Author Rogar von Oster and publisher Triplanetary Press released a story called The Slug Named Grendel in the early days of the Clone Wars. The story's protagonist is a spacer called Sossaker. He tells the tale of Flendon Sweeg. Sweeg was a down-on-his-luck criminal whose own crew abandoned him. He was being pursued by Repo agents who were going to try to take his ship. Sweeg's latest insane plan was to hunt the massive space slug Grendel as he could get about a thousand credits per kilo of body weight in these massive creatures. Grendel lived in a desolate part of space known as the Borkine Belt. Between the natural dangers and the dangers Grendel presented, ships would go into the Borkine Belt but not come back out again. Sossaker claims to have been the only one to make it out. He was also being pursued by debt collectors himself, one sent by Jabba the Hutt. When Sossaker heard that Sweeg was going into the belt to hunt the slug, promising riches to his crew, Sossaker signed up. If this tale is ringing a bell and you can't quite place it, it's Moby Dick in space replacing the whale for a slug. I imagine if this story was completed, we would see the captain delving into madness. Check out this transmission next for more lore from the galaxy far, far away.